Hello once again, welcome to the shop. This is Mr. Pete, your worn out YouTube teacher, and this is short subject number 23. And in this short subject, I'd like to show you something about bearing failure. Now, I hope you watched, if they were available yet, the complete rebuilding of this wide range South Bend quick change gearbox. But in this gearbox, among the other things that I did to it, was to replace a ball bearing that had failed and uh, didn't work very well anymore. So let me talk real briefly about the different kinds of bearings and then I'm going to take apart the bearing that is bad and see if we can tell what happened or if there's any scoring on it or rust or pits or anything like that. So why did this bearing go bad? Because I know it's 65 years old but you know how many RPM went through there over the years. I don't know, probably a lot, but it could have been a lot more. So let's get on with it. Okay, looking at the bottom side of the quick change gearbox, the bearing that I replaced is right in here. You can't even begin to see it because it's covered up by gears. And uh, it had no way of being lubricated over the years, although they took a great effort to make sure that everything else could be lubricated in here. So it just lacked the lubrication. I, it wasn't moisture or water or anything like that, I don't believe, and I don't believe the chips could have gotten in there. And this is the old bearing, and it will turn, but it is absolutely rougher than a cob. If I had a good microphone, you'd be able to hear it. You can see a little rust on there, but this is what's called a double shielded. See, there's a metal shield on each side. And the purpose of that was to hold the lubrication in, but it's again, it's not really watertight, and prevent uh, dust and grit and corruption from getting into the bearing. So let's take a look at some other kinds of bearings real quickly. Here is an open bearing. There is no shield or seal on either side, so this would be very... Uh, susceptible to damage. However, it would be used in an environment where dust couldn't get in there probably and lubrication could get in there. It would be very easy to lubricate this bearing. If you had access to it, that is. And this is a double seal bearing. So it's like a rubber seal that keeps bad things from getting in and keeps the oil or grease from getting out for the life of the bearing. Well, what is the life of the bearing? Who knows? And here's yet another kind that has a rubber seal on one side and a shield on the other. Seal, shield. Okay, those are the basic kinds of bearings. There's a lot more than that really, but that gives you a little insight into what shielding and sealing is. So now I'm going to cut this bearing apart so that we can examine it. First I'll pop the shields out. That's real easy to do. All right, this is a bad bearing. I don't care how I'm holding it. Uh, or you know, we'd never hold a good bearing like this, of course. So using a scratch all, so you can pop those shields right out of there. It's kind of a press fit. I already removed the other one, and you can see that there is dried or hardened grease in there. Obviously, it's not getting onto the balls because it is rougher than a cob. You know the first thing I'm going to do here is put just a little bit of oil in there and see if it frees up because in the past over the years I have repaired a lot of lawn mowers, riding mowers by uh, that had bad spindle bearings by just poking a hole in there and using one of those hypodermic needles with a grease gun or forcing some oil in there and you can get a few more years out of them if you're super cheap but all right I get so off subject I know it so we'll put some oil in there let it soak a little bit and see if it frees up and not really not really so that that didn't do any good now I'm going to take a grinder and cut this off. This is hardened steel, obviously. I never use my Horror Freight grinder without goggles or a full face shield. Well, 
let's see what I've got so far so there's one half with some dried up grease now I clean this this is the outer grease and I cleaned the groove and scrubbed it with brake cleaner and I see no damage at all on the surface here that I'm pointing to where the balls ride I don't know if you can see but there is an awful lot of grease in there but remember I just added oil too look at how wrinkly my fingers are holy mackerel King Tut's fingers look better in the coffin than mine the balls look all right boy there's an awful reflection I know you're not going to see that now when I cut through it I did cut through the cage here I believe this is called the cage so it's coming right off otherwise it wouldn't now let me clean this and see what it looks like be right back okay I've cleaned up this inner race and I see absolutely no pitting no wear no marks so I'm really surprised at that however it could well be that this is no longer within tolerance if I knew how to measure it but you know that's a radius that would be very hard to measure there's the number new departure 3203 made in USA oh that's right it's 75 years old well here's the cage with the balls let me clean that up or at least clean up one ball did you see my little blurb in, in one of my blurb in one of my other videos where I talked about the importance of bearings and bombing the Schweinfurt Germany ball bearing plants during WW2 all right I removed one ball and boy I wish I could magnify this a little more but it appears that the ball is flat like a ring all the way around it I don't know if that shows up so I'm saying here now that the balls are worn not the inner and outer race okay what I'm about to show you I consider remarkable footage by an amateur anyway so I broke out the little uh, digital microscope here and below it here in the light are two balls and one and that's a sixteenth inch bit there for reference one of the balls has the flat spot the damage facing up and then the other one off to the side so you can just see the difference so I, you know I took another ball out of the race and I'm going to attempt to show it to you on the screen here I don't know how well that's going to show up I tried to take photos using a micro card here and I'm too incompetent to do that okay there are the two balls and of course you can't see much in that picture but here is the screen and there's the tip of that little drill bit 16th inch by the way and look at the flat on the ball I've never seen such a thing in my life I am rather amazed by it and if I can move over to the other ball you'll see the difference although it looks a little bit pitted so that was the cause of the bearing failure well it's not the cause but that's the results of the bearing failure right here and that is Randy's scriber and you can see it needs a good sharpening that's carbide does that interest you are you amazed by that I am but you know I am I know that I am amazed by things that other people are not and uh, that disappoints me in the other people but it disappoints me in myself too because I think like what's the matter with you that you think this is interesting am I that dull I don't know if I should show this or not but this is the outer race the groove that the balls ride in and there's a terrible reflection but you can see a little bit of scuffing and damage to that now let me show you the inner race all right this is a stop all right this is the inner race and you can see some grooving there but I, I really can't tell what is where and 
because the more you magnify something, even if it appears to be perfect from the factory, the uh, poorer the finish looks like. But I'm sure that it's probably not good either. But it's the balls that I thought were remarkable that they're just plain flat. You know what? I like to measure things to verify, but here with the Sterrett micrometer, you, I am measuring the flat. I think you can see that, that I'm, I have the anvils on the flat, and I'm getting 274 thousandths. Now let me rotate it to the round part and see what the true diameter is. You see, it should be 281 or thereabouts. It's probably a metric measurement. Almost all of these bearings are, in fact, if you check them. But look at that. What, almost 10 thousandths difference? Wow! So it's almost a little more obvious here by measuring it than it was by examining it through the microscope, mainly because the lighting is so difficult and reflective. You know, I would very much sincerely like to know if people like this type of content or am I wasting my time because you know what, I would have done this without even photographing it because I'm that interested in seeing what is happening but I thought I'd go ahead and record this for posterity if there is such a thing. So give me a thumbs up if, or leave me a comment if you like this type of thing. So this is like a root cause analysis or something like that. I'm sure I got that all wrong but you know, there are probably men that are engineers and in the ball bearing companies that maybe are even watching this, you know, you go ahead and identify yourself and your credentials and uh, tell me what you uh, think of this analysis. And, uh, you know, bearings will wear out. They just, they have a lifetime, but this looks just like a lack of lubrication because the lube, the grease dried up and eventually wasn't flowing back into the balls where, where it actually needs to be. But again, a 75 year old or 70 year old probably bearing. So from about 1953, never been replaced and uh, I rejuvenated that with a, with a sealed bearing. Although my sealed bearing, although it's brand new, is 40 years old, so some of that grease may have dried up, but we'll let the next owner of that gearbox determine that. Well, that concludes this video, but there'll be a little extra credit that I'm going to do right now, but it's a rant. If you don't want to hear a rant, turn it off right now, but I'm going to rant a little bit about the way modern products, including this little microscope here, are poorly constructed. Amazing. Well, all right, we'll hold that for the rant, so... So long for now if you're not watching, and I'll see you in uh, two seconds if you stick around. Actually, here's something you might find interesting before I start talking about the equipment here. But uh, this is concerning bearing failure. And only five days ago, when I came out to my garage driveway, Jordan's boat, his duck hunting boat, is sitting there, and there's a wheel missing. And uh, when he talked to me later the day, he's 22 now, so he had just got, he had been duck hunting. So he's got a boatload full of decoys, and what happened about three or four miles from here, he had bearing failure as he's going down the blacktop. The wheel flew off. He sees the wheel, you know, in the ditch, like, where did that come from? That can't be mine. Well, he looked back there, and there's sparks flying and everything. So anyway, he had to be towed. $90, and they towed it into my driveway here, so i got to put up with this for a while. But, uh, so what happened there is that the, the outer bearing failed, obviously, probably due to water getting in there, although he's got those nut buddies on there that you pump grease into. I don't know if those are any good. But any kind of boat trailer where the wheels go into the water, I mean, I've seen this over and over and over, and I'm sure you have too. And he never checked those. Now he knows he needs to check those yearly. And so he has to get an entirely new axle and bearings and U-bolts and all of that. I'll help him put it in. But it's January here. It's cold. So uh, I guess my... Oh, and then, uh, of course, before I could get the vehicle stopped, the, <laughs> the axle stub with a burnt-out bearing on there, still on there, I think. If I ever can find those parts, I'll show them maybe. But the the axle drug along the blacktop, and of course the thread is ruined, you know, I felt the bottom of it, and you know, it's all ground down, so bearings are a big deal. 
but it's not something you think about very much. Well, now the extra credit. Okay, I have a tremendously low tolerance for uh, for some things, you know, and this just bugs the heck out of me. So when I'm making this video here, I'm using this, and look, that falls right off. You know, it hooks on, but, and this is supposed to suck down, and I thought, I'll just put it in a vise so it's, so it's rigid. But, you know, there's no substance to that. So if you put the little screen on there, you know, it's going to fall off, and it's just going to make you mad. It's going to give you a tantrum. I'm glad I didn't show my little tantrum. But anyway, I bought this a week ago, and this is a light that I will be using in photography here. Forty bucks, and I, I, I haven't used it yet, but I think I'm liking it here. There's the on and off, there's the dimming switch, and then you can change the color here too, which I know nothing about. I need to learn that. But why am I showing you this? Simply because, again, no substance at all if you just, this will go on a tripod or camera or whatever. So I just, an hour ago, made this little quarter inch thick, 5 16 thick plate to give it some stability so it, you know, it won't knock down when I breathe on it and make me angry. So an amazing device, but a piece of junk as far as all of this is concerned. And I'm sure that you all see that in products. Now, if it was made heavy, you couldn't afford to buy it. I realize that. So I know why they're doing that to keep the cost down and the weight down and all, all of that. But it's just frustrating as heck. Do you agree with me or am I just an old grouch? All right, that is the end of it. Hope you like that. And uh, in the garbage goes the old bearing. See you next time. This was supposed to be a short video and it didn't end up being that way. I sure hope that none of these balls get flat.